Hey guys, it's Katie. Welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, hi, welcome. My name is Katie Bismar. I'm an author and an editor, and this is the perfect video to start if you are new to my channel because that's the whole reason I'm making it. So welcome. It kind of occurred to me that I might be taking for granted just how much content there is on this channel. I started my channel back in 2016. It's 2023 when I'm filming this, and so much has changed since then. So even though I have shared my entire journey through my social medias, I think I kind of assume that everyone or most everyone who's watching me has seen all of that content and knows everything. And that's like impossible if you haven't been here for several years, there's no way you, I don't know, maybe there is someone who went back and watched everything, but there's no way you know everything. Not to mention, I post over here on my main channel. I also have a second channel on YouTube. And I also post on Patreon and I also have all my other social medias. So basically I wanted a place that was like all in one, a really condensed, easy version in case you're interested <laughs> in getting caught up and knowing everything that you need to know. I also love doing these like walk down memory lane kind of things. So the purpose of this video is to kind of take you back, go back in time to where we started and journey along through all of the ups and downs of my career so far until we get here in a way this is really self-indulgent for me to look back and this is a video for me to be able to watch but also if you're new here this will give you the timeline of everything and if you're in a similar career as me or you just have like similar aspirations maybe this will be a bit of a pep talk for you a little bit of inspiration basically how did i go from being a broke college student in 2016 to I mean, as cheesy as it sounds, I'm living my dream life now. I'm so happy. My career is at a place that honestly I never thought it would be at, let alone where it would be at the age that I am currently. And basically just wanted to give a little transparency in like how that change even happened for me. If you've been here the whole time, you've watched it happen in real time, but this is gonna be a really quick like time-lapse version of that. So before we jump in, thank you so much to today's sponsor, Dossier. This is super fitting because they have been a really big supporter of my channel in the past few years, and they are a company that I just adore and I love working with. They're a fragrance company, and they are the perfect place to look for dupes for your favorite designer or luxury scents. At a fraction of the cost, all of their scents are between 30 and 40 if you go on their site, it'll show you what designer scent each of their perfumes was inspired by. I've been asked in the past if I could list all of the different perfumes that I've used like on my website or something because I do this scent association thing where I pick one of their perfumes and I associate it with one of my projects and I wear it through the duration of me working on that specific book. Looking back, reflective video, this is the perfect place we can look through <laughs> the perfumes through the years. There's not that many because I work on books for such a long time, but the first time I ever did this was for Bloodless which is the third book in my marionette series and the scent for that was their floriental cedarwood you can kind of tell by how much of it is gone i love this scent we're not even working on this book anymore but this is what i'm gonna wear today because i miss it <laughs> i this is probably my favorite of theirs i maybe just because i've like worn it for so long because bloodless ties took me such a long time to write this is this is a good one and then for broken perfect lies which is one of my more recent standalone releases. The scent for that one was Fruity Brown Sugar. And then the perfume for the book that I'm working on currently, which is Ruthless Ends, Mary Nett's book four, is their Ambery Lavender. I'll have a link down below in the description if you wanna check them out. That will also get you some money off. Would highly, highly recommend them. And let's get on into the video now. The easy years to talk about, we have from 2016 to 2018. I was in college and I wasn't publishing or anything like that. I wasn't even, I had no idea that this was the direction my life was going to go. At that point, this channel was strictly booktube. I was making TBRs and reading blogs and book reviews and all of the typical booktube stuff. I am so grateful to, I was 19. I had just finished my freshman year of college and it was the summertime and I had actually like decided in the middle of the school year I wanted to start this channel but I waited till the summertime so I could film at home because I had a roommate in college and I didn't want to do it while I was at college and then even in the summertime when I started this channel I would wait till everybody left the house like I was so secretive about the channel and just like so excited to start it because I had been watching booktube since like 2012 or 2013 and I'd wanted to start my channel for so long but I was still 
very like insecure and not very confident at that point in my life anyway let alone putting myself on camera and i didn't want anyone to hear me filming in the house little 19 year old katie i look back and it's just like I want to give her a hug. Hi everyone, my name is Katie and I'm going to be doing the new to booktube tag. Top 5 Wednesday, top 10 favorite books of all time. The booktube newbie tag, rapid fire book tag, an original tag video. So this is going to be the first date book tag. I, along with four of my booktube friends, are going to be hosting a readathon for the Unbecoming of Mara Dyer trilogy. My least favorite books that I read. This is the start of a new series. I think you'll get the same idea no matter what, so we're just going to do it like this. My one year booktube anniversary. How to booktube in college. <laughs> I just kind of wanted to sit down and have a little chat with you guys. Today we got some controversy. Owl Crate unboxing, but as far as I'm concerned, the entire month of October is Halloween. I was so freaking awkward in those first couple of videos. I had no idea how to be on camera. And then, yeah, if you were around for that time period, I am so sorry. Most of those videos are privated at this point. I look back on those videos and I'm like, who even is that? Like, that's not my personality. That's not how I talk. Like, who is that? But I'm really, really grateful that I started the channel back in 2016 because it really gave me time to build an audience and to grow. And this channel was such a big like launching pad for my career i didn't plan it to be that way but i do think a lot of the opportunities that i've had and the things that i've been able to do were because i've always had this like in the background so then coming into 2018 the summer before my senior year of college is when i published my first book i am publishing a book i have a book coming out i am super 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 excited about it the book that i've been working on for a little over two years i started it when i was 19 i'm now 21 a playlist for my poetry book that's coming out but look what is available for pre-order this is like the full cover with the spine and the back and it was a collection of poetry called The Sweetest Kind of Poison. This had been a book that I had been working on since my sophomore year of college, and I basically just over the summer wanted to do something for fun. I vlogged the whole process on the channel, and literally the thought was like, I'm gonna self-publish this and then never think about it again. Never market it, never gonna self-publish another book. Like this was a one-off, like weird little fixation project that I had. I had no idea what it was going to turn into. At the time, I had really just started getting into reading poetry. It's around the time like Milk and Honey was really popular and that new wave of modern poetry was starting to grow. And so I had started posting poetry on my Instagram and gotten a good bit of traction and I'd written so much poetry and I was just like, maybe I could just like put this together into a collection and that's what I spent finals week at college doing instead of um, <laughs> studying for finals. And I remember like cutting out all of the poems and these little scraps of paper and like rearranging them on the floor, trying to figure out the order of everything. Here's what Owen tells you about hitting rock bottom. Then I set it aside for like a year and finally in 2018, August of 2018, I finally decided to publish the book. One of my followers on YouTube reached out who was a student for design and she offered to do the cover for me for free. I formatted the book myself in Microsoft Word. I proofread it myself. I didn't hire anyone. I didn't spend a dime on this book. And I truly went into it with the expectation that nobody was gonna buy it. <laughs> like maybe some of my followers from Instagram who like, the post and that was fine with me and i'm looking back at the numbers right now so in 2018 from august when it came out to december the book sold 111 copies and i remember being thrilled with that i was overjoyed <laughs> like i was with the amount of royalties i got i feel like i made like a thousand dollars that year on the book or something and for a 19 year old in college that was like a lot of money also with my fixation with angel numbers now the fact that my first year of sales is 111 sales is funny to me and then moving into 20 19 i still wasn't planning on pursuing this i still wasn't planning on doing anything else but i did start to like market it a little bit like i would talk about it in my videos every once in a while i would like i put it on sale once like i still had no idea what i was doing i had no plan i was literally just like oh yeah i have a book if you want to get it and then that year we sold 328 copies so more than the first year even though i think my channel probably did grow a little bit during that time I, this is when my content started to look really different on this channel because i was doing weekly college vlogs i wasn't even talking about books at this point because i wasn't reading and 2019 is the year that i graduated from college that was really embarrassing 
embarrassing. Let's go, let's graduate. I've been working on rewriting one of my novels right now. He told me I should think about trying to get it published. And I'm tempted to like take a shot of tequila before I go. <sighs> I just finished my final presentation. It's done. I just graduated college. It's my first day of work. One year ago, today, I self-published my debut poetry collection and moved back home, started working real jobs and realized very quickly, I hate this. I don't want to work in an office. I don't want to work for someone else, but like, I don't know what else to do. And I feel like that was the point when my channel really started to grow as something other than a booktube channel, both in my content changing, but also I remember this being the time period when there was like the most enthusiasm from my audience. And I think that's probably because those early years I was still getting comfortable being on camera. My personality wasn't coming through much at all. I wasn't sharing much of my life at all. I was strictly doing a book haul and talking about books. And then this year I was showing daily like lifestyle vlogs of me in college. I was starting to get more comfortable on camera and I think People were finally able to connect with me as a person <laughs> because I was finally able to be myself on my channel. I promise we're getting into more about like the books and the publishing in my career journey, but this was important background knowledge for my self-indulgent part of this video. So 2019, graduated from college, moved into my parents' basement, had a creative writing degree that everyone told me was going to be useless and I was starting to get very, very afraid that they were right. I did a internship downtown in Denver for a um, software company and I was copywriting for them hated it and I was so afraid <laughs> I'm like well, what the hell what was this turn that my life was taking I'm like this is not this was not it for me this is not what I'm supposed to be doing so at the end of that internship around August um, they asked me to stay I said hell no in a polite professional corporate way and I started nannying and at this point I really just had to swallow my pride and not care what anybody else was gonna say because on the outside looking at this girl who insisted on majoring in creative writing and now she's living in her parents basement and she is nannying with a college degree in her back pocket like I know how it looks but I was like no this is what I'm supposed to be doing and also <laughs> I don't like kids so <laughs> this whole period of my life was strange um, I also started working for uh, Q kids and I taught English to kids online in China and at this point I still don't know if I had at this point, I feel like I'd probably decided that I was gonna self-publish. I had been working on my novel, The Anti-Virginity Pact, at that point. This was a book that I was working on through my senior year of college. I actually wrote it my senior year of high school and then never touched it again and found it in college and decided to rewrite it that senior year. My original plan had been to go with traditional publishing and then that's a whole other video on why I decided to go with self-publishing, but I did. So in the background, I'm working on the anti-relation, or not the anti-relation, the anti-virginity pact. I haven't told anyone, I haven't shared that with my audience. It's kind of my, I think I was at this point just referring to it as my secret project. Secret project. The secret is out. I have a book coming out this year. And then this was also when I started my editing services. I started out on Fiverr. I won't get super into like how I grew the editing business because I have a whole other video on that literally titled like how I became a book editor. So I'll have that video linked down below if you missed that. So I had the editing business in the background. We were nannying, teaching, the YouTube. I had Patreon just started. I was working on the anti-virginity pact. I was not sleeping. I had no social life. I was only working, but I was just like so certain this was going to be the correct path for me. And lo and behold, I started making a decent and enough amount of money that in December of that year, I moved out of my parents' place and I got my own condo. Bye, mistake. Bye. We're at the new condo. We just finished signing all of the papers. I figured I would show you an empty condo tour before we get all of the furniture. And then this is what you see when you come in the door. Then 2020 hits, we have the pandemic which honestly, I hate to say anything positive about the pandemic because I know how negatively it impacted so many people. Even if you didn't get sick or you didn't lose someone from getting sick, I know how much of a toll that took on people. But honestly, the pandemic, I feel like was perfect timing for me because I was like trapped inside and it forced me to just like focus and get down to work. And I feel like I was able to accomplish so much in such a short period of time because I didn't have this like FOMO anymore. Like I wasn't missing out. I wasn't, you know, supposed to be out socializing. Like it was fine for me to just be working 24 seven. So anyway, 2020, is when I decided to go all in with self-publishing. And so that book that I had been working on since college, The Anti-Virginity Pact came out in June of 2020. And if you're thinking like, oh, this is when 
things really started to take off. This is when things started to change. Um, no. <laughs> no, not at all. Not that the book did poorly. In its first year from, it came out in June to December, it sold just under 700 copies, which is not anything to complain about. But if we're talking about a full-time living from being a writer, that's not it. Let alone the reception was not what I had been hoping for in the terms of reviews and people actually liking the book. <laughs> if this doesn't go well, if this whole book launch doesn't go well, if people don't like this book, am I gonna feel like really discouraged and not wanna work on this new book? We got our first one star review today. Well, shit. <laughs> that hurts. That's made me not want to proofread this anymore because I don't want to think about this right now. And I'm trying not to let it ruin it for me and I'm trying not to let it get to me. If you don't know what my book is about, it's about a girl who's a senior in high school. She lives in a super religious family. Her dad is a preacher at her church and she is struggling because she doesn't believe the same way that her family does. She considers herself to be an atheist and it's about her senior year of high school. And so I kind of knew tackling religion was going to be tricky. The people who have gone above and beyond leaving a negative review, some of which have not even read the book, who have taken it upon themselves to email me or private message me on my social medias or leave comments on my YouTube videos to the point where I don't throw this word out lightly but it feels like I'm being harassed. And the way that people have reacted to this book, frankly, has just completely like proved the entire point of what I was trying to write at the book. People have just been saying things to me and telling me I'm going to hell and calling me pig-headed and ignorant and saying I'm deliberately misleading my impressionable audience and why am I bashing religion? And it's been really difficult to stay excited about this release. In the back of my mind, I'm like, am I gonna get another email today? Am I gonna get another private message today from a super religious person who hates my guts? Again, whole other topic. Basically, it's kind of a controversial book and it rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, as I knew it would, but also that was a time. That was a time and a half. And yet, persevered, thank God. I released a second poetry collection later that year in October of 2020 called Poems for the End of the World. And this book is, it had, it, this book will always hold such a special place in my heart both because I'd actually been writing this book back when I was still living in my parents' basement. I wrote it for like NaNoWriMo that year. And it's a pretty like dark and heavy poetry collection, but it's something that I think really resonated with a lot of people. And it's something that sometimes I go back and I read old writing and I kind of cringe and I'm like, oh, I could do so much better now. Poems is one of the few books of mine, early books of mine that I go back and I read through and I'm still just like, damn i'm proud of this one like this one is good like did i write that <laughs> i really like this book and this one ended up getting nominated for a goodreads choice award so this one brought in a whole new audience to me not just like my, from my social media happy release day hot new releases number two Even with all of that said though, poetry is something that I have a really hard time selling. It's much more difficult to convince people to read poetry than fiction. It's a lot more niche. So in its first year from October to December, it sold 419 copies. First calendar year. And in 2020, The Sweetest Kind of Poison sold about 400 copies too. So all in all, that year, I think I sold like 1,500 books, which certainly nothing to complain about from self-publishing. The average book that self-published sells 250 copies in its lifetime. So it was above average, but like not where I wanted to be. So 2020 was my first year of self-publishing the way that I think about it, because it's the first year I was like really focusing on it and trying to make a career of it. But that first year, it was a good solid year of like laying the groundwork, getting a couple of books out, learning the ropes and how to even do this, starting to practice and dealing with getting negative reviews and learning how to be an author online, especially coming from the booktube space. I had to learn how to transition from being a reviewer and like a book influencer to being a professional online and you having different expectations on you. I was still nannying and teaching through September of 2020. And then in like the end of September, October is when I went full time with just the books and my editing business and social medias and all that kind of stuff. Yesterday, I quit my job. 
which means I am just going to be a full-time editor and writer, which uh, I'm like getting emotional, like I'm gonna cry. If you're curious about specific numbers, I do go into all of that over my Patreon page. I do yearly income reports. Then we move into 2021, and this is the year where I thought like things had skyrocketed. Like I was over the moon with the results that I was seeing in 2021. Like little did I know what was gonna happen in 2022. But 2021 was my like write and grind year. I published three full length books, one of which was like super, super long. And this is the year that I started my marionette series, which I feel like this series is just like such it's kind of like my anchor series. I feel like this has really changed the course of my career, both with it's a completely different genre than I've been publishing previously, but also the enthusiasm from readers for it. So in 2021, in March, I released the Anti-Relationship Year, which is a companion to my first novel, The Anti-Virginity Pact. This one was like a new adult romance though. And it's so funny because now, today, this is my best-selling book, but that first year that it came out, it really didn't sell that well. From March to December of 2021, it sold about 750 copies. Copy, so honestly about the same as the anti-virginity pact did its first year and then in August is when book one of the marionettes came out and this one really took off in a way that I had never seen like right out of the gate with the book this one sold almost 2,000 copies from August to December which compared to like my other numbers was a lot for me at the time and I was like holy shit like people really like the vampire books <laughs> like this was Again, a purely self-indulgent kind of book. I grew up reading like Twilight and Vampire Academy and I'm watching the Vampire Diaries and I was like, I want a book that makes me feel like all of that paranormal stuff that I loved as a teen. So I'm gonna write it for me. And then apparently a lot of people felt the same way. And then in December of that year, I released Wicked Souls, which is the second book in that series. And that one sold about a thousand copies in its first month um its first calendar year so at this point in my career i'm feeling like damn like things are going well like this is what it is like to like actually have your book sell as an author even though i mean they were selling well for me but in the grand scheme of things um not bad amazing not bad not amazing and then we move into 2022 and this is where i really feel like my career took a turn for a couple of different reasons so if you're trying to get any advice out of this video this is the year to listen to because this is when I really started to learn how to make an, a successful author career. But the reason why I've been talking for 25 minutes prior to this and didn't just jump straight into this is because I feel like it's important to see the whole journey. I went from this clueless college kid who decided to just like throw out a book for sale because hey that kind of sounded fun to still a semi clueless graduate who had no idea what she was doing but like hey maybe i'll publish another book and we'll see how that goes I spent way too much money on that debut novel too i there's not a single thing that i would change about this journey despite it taking technically from 2018 to 2022 for me to start seeing like serious full-time writer worthy results because 2020 was the year that i learned a lot and i feel like it grew a lot as a writer as a person as a businesswoman and like learning how to even be a freaking entrepreneur because that's what you are when you are a self-published author and then 2021 was the year where i started to see some success and i'm so grateful that it was like a small slice of the pie that i got because if we went from like selling a hundred copies of my book my first year to what I'm seeing now, that jump would have been too much for me to handle. <laughs> like having these incremental steps, it makes you appreciate things more. It helps you grow more. It helps you learn the things that you need to learn along the way. So I don't know. I think a lot of people just wanna see this like overnight success. And for the people that that happens to, that's awesome. But I think there's a lot of value actually in going about it in a slow way and getting to experience all of these in between steps. I don't know if that resonates with you at all. I would encourage you to slow down. And even if you're not seeing these like massive, crazy number one on Amazon results or whatever, maybe you're gonna get there someday. And maybe you're just in these in between years right now. And there's a lot that, you could learn from these years and appreciate too. With all that said, we come to 2022 and 100% I attribute this year's success to me learning how to market, me learning to get over myself and to put myself out there. And even though it feels awkward to be selling your books, acknowledging that, okay, either you're going to continue seeing the results that you're seeing now, which is like, okay, but not that great, or you're gonna feel awkward 
and you're gonna start to see the results that you wanna see. Like if not feeling awkward is more important to you than seeing the results you wanna see, then by all means, don't put yourself out there. So 2022, I jump headfirst into TikTok. And there's another video of mine that you might find interesting if you're not into like the woo-woo stuff don't even waste your time <laughs> it was like the beginning of 2022 i made a video talking about why i was so much happier last year and basically i started getting really into law of attraction and manifestation and all of that kind of stuff and i don't think it's a coincidence that the year that i started really getting into that stuff is the year that my career really took off obviously because i believe in that kind of stuff so i don't want to get too much into it in this video because i know it's not everyone's cup of tea but i wanted to throw it out there because i really do think it's a big factor as to why my career looks so drastically different now than it did even just a year ago so anyway we come into 2022 and the releases that i had in 2022 i released breakable things which was my third poetry collection in i think april and then i had bloodless ties which is the third book in my marionette series come out in november and i went from in 2021 selling like 5,000 copies of my books in the entire year over all of my books to in 2022 selling over like 22,000 copies of my book. So it wasn't a little jump, it was a big jump. And then this year is even bigger than that. So when I say it's different, it's not a little different, it's a lot different. And of course there are a lot of different factors that go into that. And this is something that I have documented across uh, many videos. I have videos on my marketing experiment talking about the findings that I was compiling as I just started posting on TikTok and going through that. But 2022 really like opened my mind and opened my eyes to like what was even possible. Like the anti-relationship here, my lowest selling book of 2021 ended up being my best seller of 2022 selling over 10,000 copies of that book alone and I don't spend money on marketing I I do ads now at this point I wasn't doing ads I wasn't doing any kind of like paid marketing stuff it was strictly like word of mouth and me grinding and putting out like five videos a day trying to market my books and just hoping one of them would take off and that's all it takes is having one do well so if you're new to my channel that's a brief overview of the journey and now I'm here and I have nine books out. I have my 10th book coming out this September which is Ruthless Ends, the last book in my marionette series. There's plenty more that we could go into but I feel like I've been talking in this video for plenty long. I'll link other relevant videos down below. Like I said, I have my income reports over on Patreon and then anything else relevant I'll put down below. If you've been here through this whole journey or at least most of this journey thank you so much for sticking around with me if you want to check out any of my books they're linked down below if you have any questions as always feel free to let me know hope you guys are all doing well that's gonna be it for today's video i will just see you guys in our next one very very soon reminders for a couple of other things that are linked down below if you want to sign up for our barcelona writing retreat in september that's down below my new adult sci-fi book Project Z is being released in a serialized fashion on my Patreon page if you want to come get caught up over there. It's exclusive to Patreon. That's the only place you can read the book. And you can pre-order Marionette's book for now. See you next time. No.